everyone i hope you all are safe and doing good so in the series of learning python programming language in the previous video we have seen what are access specifiers or access modifiers in python public protected and private right and till now we have discussed two oops concept inheritance and abstraction the third one is encapsulation so it is one of the four pillars of oop four pillars are inheritance abstraction encapsulation and polymorphism and it's also important from security point of view now how i'll show you so what is basically first we'll discuss encapsulation and how we are going to achieve encapsulation with the help of program i'll show you practically right now let's see this thing with the help of real life example what is encapsulation see uh, i hope you have seen uh, that capsule right like this we have a capsule and here in this we are having some drugs or you can say medicine right and if you are sick or if you are not feeling well or if you have any other problem you just take it and it will act in your body accordingly right you will be fine so now within this capsule we are having some amount of drug different types of thing so these are bundled together or these drugs or these medicines are wrapped together you just take that complete capsule it's not like that you just open it and then you take individual uh, that component obviously not right so that is encapsulation encapsulation means just wrapping of something now in programming what is encapsulation if you say then what you are going to wrap what you are going to bundle in one unit or in one capsule what the data members or you can say the data and methods together so you will find this kind of definition everywhere like wrapping up of data or you can say code and methods into a single unit that is encapsulation right the data and the methods which are acting upon that data into a single unit that bundling or that wrapping is known as encapsulation so obviously this is a kind of shield it is going to protect whatever there inside the capsule from outside world right so same in programming also it it is a shield kind of thing right that is going to protect our data and our method from outside world now how that i'll show you right so now basically if i say like if you are defining a class then what is there in a class class here you will have a class name then some attributes and methods this is class so this is just an example of encapsulation simplest example because in class we are having some attributes of the class or you can say the data of the class or the member data members of the class as well as the methods in the single unit right so this is you can say our capsule or this is what nothing but encapsulation so like in real world we have this kind of capsule and so it's not easy to open that capsule right or maybe if something is very precious like in previous example we have discussed access specifiers so that thing you will put in a locker you have a lock and you have a key but in programming obviously we are not having any proper lock or any proper key right so there are simply some name convention some notification or this kind of thing right so here you are going to achieve encapsulation or you are going to see encapsulation is wrapping up of these things into single unit right as well as encapsulation is also known as data hiding it protects our data it hides the data right as well as the implementation detail from the user see in abstraction i have told you abstraction is basically a process of finding out which functionality is shown to the user and which is to be hidden from the user right but actual hiding is done with the help of this thing encapsulation now how we are going to hide using access specifier and access specifier public private protected that thing we have discussed in previous video right so encapsulation is also known as data hiding so i want to hide some data then you just declare that attribute suppose a student age i want to hide that age right so i just declare that age variable private that's it or i want to hide some method from outside world that also method we can do uh, we can make that method private or either protected right 
So in, if you make it protected, then derived class can, can access those protected uh, attributes and methods. But if a method or an attribute is private, then that we can use only inside the class, not outside the class. Yes, we can we can access private methods and attributes outside of the class. There are basically three methods. First, just create public method within the class only and using that we can access private uh, methods and attributes. Second thing using name mangling and third thing using getter and setter methods. So first two technique we have discussed in previous video. Please watch that video first, right? That's very important to get encapsulation. Now third method using getters and setter method how you can achieve encapsulation that thing I'll show you practically in this video right I hope now the basics of encapsulation what is encapsulation is clear to you guys right so if I say uh, what are advantages or let me just show you that practical example and at last we will just summarize this thing and I'll show you I'll tell you the advantages of encapsulation right. Okay, so uh, see this was the example you have taken in previous video when we were discussing access specifier, public, private and protected because obviously using this specifier only we can achieve encapsulation. We can hide our data, right? Or you can say not only the data, our methods as well as, right? Like this example you have taken, this name is public, this one is protected. If the, this is a prefix with one, a one underscore that is protected and this age is private private instance variable so it is uh, prefixed with double underscore and we have a private method as well as right so if you want to access this private attribute outside of the class directly with the help of this we cannot access if you want to print directly with the help of like s1 and underscore underscore age i want to print age so it will give error see Attribute error, student object has no attribute age because outside of the class we cannot access private if it is a private method or private attribute. Within the class means this area is within the class only, only this area. This object we are creating outside of the class so that is why we are not able to access this thing, right? So this is obviously we are hiding our data, we are protecting our data from public access. We are restricting the access to our data which is very maybe some sensitive data we have in our class. It's just a simple program but in industry when you are working on project then definitely there must be some sensitive information in that project. So that we are going to declare that thing as private. Okay. Now how you can access this private kind of thing? Either you can use first method is using public method you can access this thing. See this display private data is public method. So here I am just calling uh, this, this display method is private. So directly we cannot access out, outside of the class but within this public method we can access, we can call this method. So underscore underscore display and within this display I am accessing age. That is fine. Now I can call outside of the class this display private data, right? So if I call like s1 dot display private data then we can access let let me just comment out this thing see now rahul age and all number 23 from student class right like this you can access second thing how you can access private data using name mangling so that also we have discussed in last video using dir you can do name mangling and how to access name mangling type of thing this is the example see if you want to call this display method because this is private directly you can call but using name mangling we can call so name mangling what you have to do first underscore then class name then private data or private attribute name or private method name this is fine now this display will work now let me just comment out this thing let's run this now see this display is working right this function or if you want to access this age that is also fine we have uh, see using name mangling the object name dot underscore class name underscore underscore age it is fine third thing is now using getter and setter method we can access private kind of thing now basically if i would say uh, this is the you know best process using getters and setters method to implement complete encapsulation in your program right because see we can access private 
data outside of the class. So in Python, there is no such mechanism to completely restrict the access of private data outside of the class. It's flexible, right? It is responsibility of a good programmer to you know, not touch private and protected members outside of the class. Do not modify these things outside of the class. I can modify this private data outside of the class. So if I want to modify like this age, then simply you have to access like this and equal to now age I just want to set 45 let's run this and see 45 year old so I can modify this data outside of the class now what is the use of this private kind of thing right so obviously if something you have seen if you are working uh, in a team on a in a company then if you have seen in a class you have private thing private attribute underscore underscore age then better not to touch this outside of the class better not to modify this it is your responsibility. These are, you can say, manners or these are ethics. It's not to touch these things outside of the class. So, always use getters and setters methods. Now, getter method is to access the private data and setter method is to set or to modify the values. Right? So, rather than modifying this thing outside of the class, okay, let's create a new project, uh, sorry, new file in abstraction demo only. And I'm creating encapsulation demo.py. And let's just copy paste the previous code as it is. Let me just remove first of all something here. Right. So we have this class. Right. This is derived class. So derived class is basically comes into picture when you are dealing with protected uh, data and uh, in inheritance basically. If you want that your derived class can access the data only derived class can access the data not public member not public person then just declare that thing as protected so this roll number this derived class can access see here directly i can access self dot roll number because this is derived class from student class right so now okay let's use getters and setters method suppose using getter Using get method, I want to get the age. So just define, uh, just name get, what get age, right? Because age is only private. So we use getters and setters on private attributes only. So get age and get means to get uh, the age. So return just self dot underscore underscore age. Or maybe directly you can print that my age is this. And if you want to modify this age, then use setters method like set. It's not like that you have to give the name getter and setter. Just indicate get and set. Like and just uh, you can say underscore and uh, the name of the attribute. Name anything you can give. Right. Set age. So I want to modify age so obviously when we call this function we are going to provide our age so let's just uh, maybe number or any parameter name you can take age you can take even age you can take a you can take x y z anything right so and basically setter and getter we use when we uh, want to apply some validation logic when we are modifying the age right so if you want to apply some validation logic either directly you can set like self dot underscore underscore age is equal to directly the attribute name age this is also fine if you want to apply some logic validation logic like if this age you have given is greater than 25 or greater than suppose 35 then print suppose i have some restriction like age should be less than 35 so if greater than 35 then it will give error else set the age else just set age right now suppose let's just comment out these two methods and comment out this class as well derived class now let's create s1 student what you need to pass name roll number age okay name roll number age and now use get and set method 
so if you want to get the age just call s1 dot get age and it is returning so definitely you have to print let's run this and it will print age is 20 okay we have given 20 if you want to modify that private variable private attribute age then just call set age and here just i just want to pass like 34 maybe okay and after that just again i want to print age just copy paste this thing and let's run this see first it was 20 then it was 34 using getters and setters method it's a good idea it's a good practice to modify private members private attributes rather than directly using name mangling modify that that is not a good practice okay a good a good programmer never do this he or she will use getters and setters method to access private variables private methods okay so we use these getters and setters method when we want to avoid the direct access to private data right then use getters and setters and if you want to apply some validation logic to set any private data that then also obviously we can apply that thing also right now i hope this is clear to you guys encapsulation what is encapsulation how to achieve encapsulation and encapsulation implements abstraction right because now actually we are hiding our data right something hiding something from outside the world and this is encapsulation so it is what, what we can say encapsulation implements abstraction abstraction is simply a thought process abstraction works at design level actually at implementation level level encapsulation works and how to achieve encapsulation obviously using these access specifiers right and how we can use you can watch my previous video and one thing we have discussed setters and getters method we have discussed in this thing so what are advantages of encapsulation obviously it provides security right it is provides our data hiding and obviously if you are bundling something bundling the code and the method which are working on that code in a single unit then that provides us a simplicity kind of thing like the code would be more uh, uh, readable and more maintainable right so i hope you got what is encapsulation how to achieve encapsulation and why this thing is important right now only one OOP if we say, uh, you know uh, concept is remaining that is uh, polymorphism so that will think uh, that will see in the next video so now i'll see you in the next video then bye bye take care